This morning, I want to just continue about releasing the supernatural power of God. I believe that uh, God is doing amazing things, and I know that there's something in the air, there's something in the atmosphere, there's something that, that we know God's about to do, and sometimes um, when God's doing things, we get a bit impatient, we don't really see everything. And uh, But as I was, even this morning, just that word I brought there that, there's things that are happening in the realm of the Spirit around our lives that we can't see. There's a, there's a, a move of God's Spirit that's, that's happening over the Sunshine Coast. There's a cloud that's beginning to, to build. There's a, there's a latter rain revival that God wants to pour out upon uh, the Sunshine Coast. And, and I know that it's coming. But, you know, sometimes there that we grow weary waiting for things. So, talking about the supernatural power of God, what I want to just say, number one, is we've got to get ready for the unexpected. We, we won't work this out. I really, I know that we're going to go up there and, and help these guys and, uh, to plant a church and, and build something there. And at the moment, no matter what we're praying, what we're saying, what God wants to do is bigger than what we could even think. And so we've got to be, get ready for the unexpected. Uh, in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, there was 120 people in an upper room. They were praying. They were, they were I suppose, just there doing what church people do. They were, they were praying. And a lot of times we might go to the Tuesday night prayer meeting, we're praying, but friend... Were they anticipating what was about to happen? I don't think so. They were just there. But when God begins to move, we've got to get ready to be able to accept the unexpected. Because when God moves, usually He moves in mysterious ways and He does things that, that we may not even think possible. But that's what God does. They, were they anticipating what God was about to do? No, I don't think so. They were praying and they were believing that what was about to happen, and I want to really express this, what was about to happen was exceedingly abundantly above all that they could even imagine or think. It was so dynamic, so powerful. And I just want to read a little bit here to you in the book of Acts chapter 2. And it says, And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they're all with one accord in one place, and suddenly, everybody say suddenly. Suddenly. I remember Jan Painter came and she started to talk about the suddenlies and, and sort of try to create in, in us an expectancy. That, that it can happen in the twinkling of an eye. It can happen suddenly. It doesn't have to take another 100 years or 200 years. It could happen today. It could happen right now. But we've got to be ready for the unexpected. We've got to be ready for God to be able to do what God wants to do. And here they were. They were in one accord, in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them divided tongues of a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. There was a move of God's Spirit, something there that, that happened to them. They were, they were empowered. The, the anointing came upon them in, a, in, a, in such a dynamic way. It was an amazing thing that happened. These people that were one minute just in an upper room, praying, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit comes in. They got so full of the Holy Ghost that they acted as if they were drunk. In other words, they were possessed. They were empowered. They were intoxicated. They were full of the Holy Spirit. This manifestation, it had a mis manifestation. The Bible says not to be drunk with wine where it is in excess, but to be filled with the Holy Spirit. 
It's interesting that, that in the Scriptures that God linked these two experiences together as if He knew what He was going to do. How many people know God knows what He's going to do? And He's trying to express it. Don't be drunk with wine where it's in excess, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the power of God. I remember Nance in the early days when the outpouring of the Spirit in 93, getting so full of the Holy Ghost, we had to carry her to the car. Actually, what we did, we had those plastic chairs. We picked the whole plastic chair up and just took it out into the car with Nancy on it. She's wobbling around like a jelly on a plate. And then we'd push her in the car. And when we got home, we, we lived on an acreage. And so I drove the car right up to the back steps, which was only a, three or four steps up to the house. We drove the car right up the back and we just opened up the door. The kids and I, we went inside. We had lunch. We'd take lunch out to her in the car. <laughs> Getting so full of the Holy Ghost, we had to carry her in not once, but many times. For somebody who was a good Methodist girl, who signed the pledge, she certainly got plastered a lot. <laughs> but you see, these guys got so full of the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 3, verse 1, it says there was a man sitting begging was he really expecting to be healed? Was he expecting this phenomenon to happen to his life? No, he was just sitting there begging, which he'd done all his life. And sometimes Christians, family, we, we can be doing something all of our lives, but if the expectancy, if we don't embrace the new thing that happens, a lot of people, when the Holy Ghost fell, they didn't embrace what was going on. But the people that experienced it, they embraced it. There's nothing better than having an experience with God. There's nothing better than being touched by the Holy Ghost. There's nothing better than, than feeling the anointing. People say, well, it's not got anything to do with feelings. No, it doesn't. But I want to tell you, God is interested in feelings. I don't go on feelings, but I thank God for feelings. Thank God you can feel His presence. I thank God you can, you can feel the atmosphere changing. I thank God that as, as we worship you, you feel something of the Holy Ghost, that God wants to invade our life. And this man was sitting there. Was he expecting to be healed? I don't believe he was. But in Acts chapter 3, verse 6, Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have. But such as I have, give I thee, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, arise and be healed. Of course, this, we know that this man, he, the Bible says in Acts 3, 8, it says, so he leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. I don't think that was the norm. But I want to tell you, friends, I want to tell you it's time that we allow God to break the stoniness that gets around us so as that we can express, so as that we can become vessels filled with the Holy Ghost, so as that we can express our love for God, so we can manifest His presence, amen. God, Brent, can you imagine, here's this guy, he's sitting there, he's been lame from birth, and now he's sitting there, Peter and John walk up to him, Peter says, silver and gold I do not have, but such as I have give I thee, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, arise and be healed, you think he would have just got up there and went, oh, well, praise God, I'm here. Oh, oh, we come, come here. Oh, the presence of God was lovely this morning. Who suck up on me. <laughs> Why don't we go leaping and praising God? Hallelujah. Why don't we let a shout come out? Can I hear a shout in this house? Yeah. Can I hear a shout in the house? Yeah. Is it okay to shout in the house? Yeah. Is it okay to leap in the house? Is it okay to praise God in the house? Is it okay to get a bit excited in the house? Well, come on, get excited. I'm going to get all excited and tell everybody that Jesus Christ is Lord. I remember. I remember this man. <laughs> I, walked, I, I was shaking hands and I, and I walked up and he's like, 
coming out of church. And I shook his hand. I said, bless your brother. He said, he does, he does. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. We got a shout in the house. You got to let the glory of God be seen. Amen. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I'll spit my false teeth out. I'll do whatever I can. Church should be the happiest place in town. It should be one of the most vocal places in town. We, we should get so excited, amen. I saw Sarah over there a while ago jumping around. I'm, Glory. Shh. I want to jump. I want to shout that Jesus Christ is Lord, amen. You see, these disciples, this guy went in and he started to shout and he started to praise and he started to leap. I don't think it was a norm. But see, friends, get ready for a move of God. Get ready for an outpouring of God's Spirit because when God moves, He's not going to move according to our thinking. But you see, these disciples, you've got to remember that something happened between Mark 16 and Acts chapter 3. Because you see, Jesus walks into a room and he upbraids them for their unbelief and their hardness of heart. And then he starts to speak to them about what he's going to do. And he, and he starts to tell them to go into all the world. I'm going to read the scripture later on. But it says there that after he spoke these words, that the Spirit of God took Jesus and took him away and they looked and they beheld and they were watching that. And if you look in Acts chapter 3, it picks up that same story where it says that they were standing there watching and that's when the Spirit of God came to them and spoke again to them just before the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Friend, we need a supernatural encounter with God to break the... The, the humanism, the, the natural thinking, the, the mold that the enemy has shaped the church in. Because I want to tell you what the church that we're seeing today, sitting around in pews, singing songs, that is not the church that Jesus is coming back for. He's coming back for a glorious church. He's coming back for a powerful church. He's coming back for a living church. He's coming back for a church that's full of the Holy Ghost. So i got news for you, friend. Get full of the Holy Ghost. Drink, drink, drink. Let everyone drink. What was that? Mario Lanza. Was it him? Eh? Who was that that sang that? See, I know. Didn't come down the last shower. <laughs> we expect the unexpected. Don't let the enemy shape your thinking. Don't let him shape your expectancy. Because he comes around and stirs and kills and destroys a vision and tries to stop God's church from activating and being who, it, who God wants it to be. We were doing a camp meeting at, at somewhere, Lennox Heads or somewhere. They set the tent up. It was all there, all ready. I was the guest speaker. So we go there, and when we get there, they said, we've got bad news. We said, what? So we had a storm last night. The, sh the tent is ripped to shreds. What do we do? Do we cancel? Do we? There's people everywhere. What do we do? What do we do? I don't know. We started looking for buildings. We found some buildings. We had a couple of meetings there. We're trying to do some stuff. But all of a sudden, they found an old picture theater. This thing was condemned, and, but this, there was a caretaker looking after it. He lived on the, on the premises. And somehow they found this guy. He said, you can use the building. So they set up the band. They set up the music, and everything's going there. And I, I walked into the place, and she was pumping. She was rocking. I want to tell you, you've got to give God something to move with. You've got to give him an atmosphere. We sing a song about the atmosphere is changing. I want to tell you, friends, it's going to change a lot more than what we're seeing at the moment. It's got to change a lot more than what we're seeing at the moment. It's got to change a lot more than we're seeing at the moment. <laughs> it's got to change a lot more. And that means that God's not going to change because He never changes. Guess who's going to change? 
If you haven't put underarm deodorant on, you can't lift up your hands. <laughs> But lift up those hands that hang down. Praise God. Open up your mouth. Sing unto God with a voice of triumph. Amen. It's got to change a lot. If we're going to see this revival, we're going to see this move of God. And there was this, this atmosphere of praise and, and it was just rocking and goodness knows what. And this lady walks in. She's got those caliper, uh, what do you call it, things on. Walking sticks, and she's coming in, and, and she's, she's really, her legs and everything about her, her hips, and all the, she was just a mess, and she's walking up and trying to get into this thing, and all of a sudden, the power of God hit her, and she threw those crutches away, and she started running up the steps, and down the steps, and up the steps, and down the steps. The people started roaring. There was a shout. We never stopped singing. The music just pumped even louder. The poor guy downstairs, or upstairs, I don't know where he was, but his TV was jumping off the thing and he's trying to hold onto the TV set and all of a sudden his cutlery starts to jump off as well. And it, Not his cutlery, his cups and saucers and he's hanging onto them and he's got one leg over here and he thought that mob down there, they're crazy. So what he did, he, he made the biggest mistake you could ever make. He turned the power off. And of course, we've just had the tent blow down. We've had, we've been kicked out of buildings. We had nowhere to go. We finally got a place. The devil, we were smashing him. We were telling him where to go. And all of a sudden, the lights went out. And instead of stopping, the people shouted the louder. They shouted the louder and they're crying out, you beauty, you devil, they're cursing the devil. And then all of a sudden the bloke said, that didn't work. So he turned the power back on and again they went higher. I tell you what, you've got to get all excited. You've got to get excited. God bless you, Dave. <laughs> no. You should have seen. I've never been in a meeting like that in all my life. They, they never, at the end of the day, I don't think they were going to demolish that thing. I think we'd already demolished it. All downstairs was demolished. The poor guy, halfway through that again, when we shouted louder, he thought they didn't get it, so he turned it off again. That was, oh man. I didn't think we could go any higher, but we did. And then he, after a while again, because everything's moving in his flat down there, he told us all late, later on, and he turned the power back on and it just went on again. Friend, I want to tell you there's so much more. There's so much more. There's so much more. This man, he got touched by God. How many people want God to touch your life? Go on, lift up your hands. Lift your hands to the air. Lift your hands to the sky. Say, come on, God, it's beginning to rain. Rain on me. Rain on my life. Fill me afresh. Let the mighty Holy Ghost come again on my life. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us afresh. Fill us with the anointing. Let the power of God come over our lives. Get ready for the unexpected. Get ready for the power of God to come. You might say, well, if I'd been like that lady, if I would have been crippled from birth, if I was blind, yeah, I, I'd rejoice too. But I want to tell you, friends, we the Christians, we the church, we got something better to rejoice about. We got something better than just be, being healed from being blind or something like that. We have something better to rejoice about and get happy about. Just think about it. You've been born again. Give me a wave if you've been born again. Go on, you're born again. What does that mean, being born again? I've been born again. You don't have to go to hell. Some people tell me where to go, but I don't have to go where they tell me to go. Amen. I'm not going to hell. Any, any, what do you reckon? Turn to somebody and say, I'm not going to hell. I'm not going to hell. I've been born again. I'm not going where Satan and his demon powers are. Where the stench. I sat in my office the other morning. I just sat there and I just imagined it. I, I just imagined what, what's, the, what's the alternative to heaven? Hell. There's no in between. It's either heaven or hell. 
where the stench is. Can you smell the stench? The stench would be overpowering. Place filled with hatred, bitterness, anger, grief, screams of terror as the fires of hell burn. We've got a lot to rejoice about. Roma's dad passed away two nights ago. But she had the privilege of going up to see him. He got born again. He's escaped. Amen. He's escaped. My soul has escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. Hallelujah. I am free to jump. I am free to shout. I'm free to be the servant of the Most High God. Freedom reigns in this house. Flames of hell burning. We've got a lot to rejoice about. Rejoice because your name's written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. A place called heaven where God's love is poured out. Elaine. Roma's dad, they're under the spout where the glory comes out. They're under the spout where the glory comes out. God's love being poured out upon them. God's mercy, God's grace. Where there's no more death, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears, no more shame. Just everlasting joy. How do I release the supernatural power of God like Peter and John? They got full of the Holy Ghost. Friend, today we've got so many people making excuses. We just need the Holy Ghost. Amen. I believe, number one, get excited about your salvation. I'm saved and I'm glad I am. Amen. I'm glad I am. In Mark 16, verse 20, let's have a quick look at that. Let's go to 14. It said, Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he'd risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it may in no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. When I started to read this again, and I've read that passage most probably thousands of times, but it was like again that the Spirit of God started to, just to highlight. And I'm thinking of Perhaps like the little girl, the impossible, the possible in my impossible world. But unfortunately, we think the impossible in my possible world. Because we think it is impossible. But we've got to start changing the way we think and start thinking about the possible. Is it possible for a city to be saved in a night? Is it possible? All things are possible to those who believe. God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above. What an amazing thing. And I'm sitting there looking and reading it again. And it's like as if God started to, to just bring it back into my heart. Because I look at myself and I know the, oh, my own imperfections and my own, I'm just a human, I'm just a natural man. But it said, 
it says there, he said, Neil, if you go, I will go with you. And when they went, it says God working with them. One of the greatest things in my life is to know that when I stand here today, when I stand here next week or the week before or whenever it was, that I don't stand alone. That God is with me. And God is working with me. And the Holy Ghost is working with us. And this is the confidence that I have in Him that he who has begun a good work in Neil is able to perform it till the day of Jesus Christ. And he who has begun a good work in Global Connections on the Sunshine Coast here right now is able to perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you, friends, if you and I get excited and get, get all carried away with God, I want to tell you, God will do the exceedingly abundantly above anything we could ever imagine or think. And what God wants to do is even greater and higher. And He said, my ways are not your ways. My ways are higher than your ways. But if the devil can keep us silent, keep us self-basting ourselves with pity, pity, pity. Oh God, God, I was sitting in an aeroplane, minding my own business. And you said, go plant a church on the Sunshine Coast. <laughs> I wouldn't buy a caravan and go around Australia. And here we are seven years later. <laughs> oh God. I felt like feel like riding Ichabod over the door of the church. <laughs> God has departed. <laughs> See that's the way the enemy wants you to think. But I want to tell you, you let the Holy Ghost stir it up inside you. It'll get hold of your ankle bones, your knee bones, your joint bones, and every bone that's in your bones. <laughs> Anybody catching my drift? They went out and preached everywhere the Lord working with them, confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Friend, I want to tell you we need signs and wonders. God working with them. Can you imagine this? God works with us. How do we get it to open? Go into all the world and preach then God works with us. Amen. I just love this church. I love this people. But oh, friends, we need a dust up. We need a touch up. We need a dose of the ghost. We need to open ourselves. We need to go out and I keep remembering Keep remembering that statement. We don't go because we're frightened or scared that somebody might say something. I met a guy the other day at the paying for my coffee. And he was over there and he wasn't in the queue apparently. And the girl said, You're in the wrong place. So he had to come over and I said, You're before me, sir. He said, No, yeah. He said, You're retired? I said, Nope. But I'm a pastor of the church. Oh, that he didn't like that. And he started saying silly things about heaven. And, and I said, I forget what he said, but anyway, I said, look, I said, mate, I said, all I know is I'm on my way to heaven. He said, but how do you know if it's up or down? I said, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As long as I'm going to heaven. That's all that matters. I, I, you're not going to get an argument out of me. I'm just going to heaven. Hallelujah. I'm happy about it. Never said anything more. I should have paid for his coffee, perhaps. Anybody feel a bit parched? 
want to drink from the Holy Ghost. Be thirsty and dry. See, that, that's the beginning. God creates a thirst in you. You fight him off like Wally Lewis fights off that front row forward coming at him. Oh, good work. <laughs> no, thirsty and dry. Why don't we stand there after him? Lift your hands. Let the Holy Ghost come on in. Why don't you invite the Holy Ghost in? Invite the Holy Ghost in. Invite the Holy Ghost in. I just sense there's somebody here this, this morning, and you've got a condition that's in the uh, left side of your head, and, and I'm going to say it, it's, it's further than just behind your ear, but it's in that, in that area of your head right there that you, you suffer a condition, whether it's pain or what, I don't know. But if that's you, I want to pray with you this morning, and I want to believe God with you. Who's that person that's here? Quickly. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Who is it? Quickly. It's not me. I don't have that problem. Who is it? Who thinks it's them? Who thinks they know who it is? Who thinks it's somebody that you, your neighbor? You, who is it? Quickly. Quickly. Anyhow, lift up your hands. Everybody lift up your hands now. Just lift up your hands. Come on, let the Spirit of God come in. Let the Spirit of God come in. Just start playing some music, please. Let's just start to worship. Let's start to pray. Let's believe God. Just start to, you know how you boogie at, at, up there? What do you call it? What do you call that, what you do up there? At the hub? Do it. Jesus, come on, folks. Still waiting for that person that's got that condition. If somebody else here, you've got a condition that's in your uh, left elbow, just above your elbow, around your elbow area. Who's that quickly? I want to pray with you right now. Good, 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 good. Who's got the head? <laughs> I'm looking for a head. <laughs> just lift up your hands. Just run over here. Just lift, them, lift up your hands, honey. Let the Spirit of God come. Yes, yes, start to pray. Fight. Yes, start to pray. Gori andi di bi bara andi di kliti di di bi banda na randa di kli bi babanda. Oh, hallelujah! Father, the fire of God, the fire of God. Oh, I want to tell you, girl, God's about to use you in a big way. There's some things coming your way. There's some things around the corner. But I want to tell you, you're going to be a voice. You're going to speak. You're not just going to sit back and play uh, tiddlywinks. You're not just going to sit back and play nice old Christian lady. You're not just going to sit back and, and do things like a normal. But I want to tell you, there's going to come a rising up within you. There's going to come a rising up within you. And you're just going to speak it. And you're going to be healed in Jesus' name. Healed in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody else here today, and you've got a condition, it's in your neck. In your neck, above your shoulder blade there. It's in your neck. I want to pray with you today. Because we're just going to boogie. We're just going to worship God. We're just going to let the love of God come. We're just going to let God flow over your lives. Let the Spirit of God come. If you're in this house today and you don't know Jesus, give your life to Christ. Give your life to Christ. Give it to Christ. You can come out here. You can stand out here. If you're not sure, if you don't know really what's going on in your life, you can give your life to Jesus this morning. You can let the power of God come around. You can let that anointing. Father, in Jesus' name, Father, we just stand right now for this woman's son in Jesus' name. We curse the works of Satan. We curse his works in Jesus' name. And my God, my God, my God, pour out the oil and the wine, the kind that would restore. Father, I pray you'll do even a greater work in this man's life. I pray you'll do a greater work in his life. Do a greater work in his life in Jesus' name. Just that, you just need the worship, David. The worship. Oh, let your fire fall, Father. You need a touch from God this morning. You need that. You, you say, Lord, I need to be loosed. I need to be loosed. I want to be loosed. I want to be free. 
I want to be free. I feel freedom in the air. I want that freedom. I want that freedom over my life. Oh, that you can say, also my soul has escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. If that's you today and you want to be that loose person, you want to be that free person, I want you to slip out of your seat. Come and stand out here today. Let the anointing touch your life. Let the power of God touch your life. Let it be the anointing that would touch you. The anointing, my God. Lord, let the anointing touch this man. Touch this man by your anointing, Father.